Hello. I wanted to talk today about something to think about before you launch an investment crowdfunding campaign. So I have been doing investment crowdfunding for many, many years. My first one that I did uh, for my own business was back in 2010. Uh, before it became legal under federal law, I was doing it under state law. And um, I've also had many, many clients do it. Our first client probably did it back in 2008. Um, so I've been doing crowd investment crowdfunding for a long time. And what is investment crowdfunding? It's when you raise money from investors where you're allowed to publicly advertise the fact that you're raising money and anyone can invest regardless of wealth or income. And, you know, in 2012, the Jobs Act passed and I was involved in the advocacy that got that law passed. I was at the White House signing ceremony. It didn't go into effect until 2016, but once it did, it did make it much easier to do uh, investment crowdfunding. And, and that is a growing area. More and more people are, are, do, are raising money this way. And it's very powerful when you can raise money from anyone anyone can invest and you can set the minimum relatively low um, and you can tell the whole world that you're raising money. There's other ways of raising money where you're actually not allowed to say publicly that you're looking for investors. So it's a great tool, but there are many, many traps for the unwary that can make it very difficult at every stage. Uh, the preparation stage, the stage where you're actually raising the money, and once you've completed your raise afterwards, you know, that's um, some people don't even think about that part because, you know, you put so much effort into raising the money that you don't even think about, well, what happens once I have all these investors? So, um, so when you raise money under the federal law, the law that makes it legal to raise money from people in all 50 states or, all, you know, there's more than 50, there's also territories. Um, so we, we call it the, uh, we call it regulation crowdfunding under the Jobs Act. Um, under that law, and there are other ways to do investment crowdfunding. There are state laws that let you do it. There's, there's quite a few different ways of doing it. But if you want to do a nationwide raise, uh, and you want to offer it to everybody, you know, allow everyone to participate and be allowed to publicly advertise, um, you're going to want to do it under the federal law, regulation crowdfunding. And under that law, you are required to use a crowdfunding platform or portal. And there's quite a few. I think there might be as many as 90 of them. <laughs> uh, so you have to choose which portal you want to use. And, you know, I, can, I have some other videos about making those choices and I can definitely... Um, you know, go on and on about many of the different things you'll want to consider when choosing a portal. But, you know, one thing that portals will uh, will talk about is how they will manage your investors after you've completed your raise. And this is very attractive to a lot of people to think like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. I can raise all this money and then I don't even have to worry about managing the investors. The portal will take care of everything. They'll send out tax forms. They'll do all the accounting. You know, they'll make sure the investors get paid what they're supposed to get paid. It sounds great, right? Um, but I have always told my clients, don't do that. Don't outsource your ongoing management of your investors because you if it becomes messy or if the platform doesn't do a good job of it, it really is going to make your life difficult. So I'll share that, you know, back in 2017, I think it was, I raised money using investment crowdfunding under regulation crowdfunding uh, on a, on a platform. And back then, I don't think they were offering the option of managing investments for, you know, it was still very new. Uh, it wasn't even a year old yet, I don't think, when I did it. Um, and I raised 400000 uh, on the platform, and then I raised another 700000 uh under Rule 506C, uh, which I can talk about in another video, but basically I raised 1 .1, over $1.1 
from 135 investors. So some investors, the you know, the minimum was a thousand dollars. So uh, we had many investors that put in a thousand, and then many different amounts all the way up to a hundred thousand. And and I had 135 investors, and you would think oh, wouldn't it be great if the platform that I used managed those investors? But it didn't even occur to me to do that. And again, I don't think it was even an option back then. So I have been, it's an eight year investment. It's a, it's a revenue based debt instrument that I offered to my investors. So I've been managing that now for, you know, since 2017, um, we're almost at the end of that, of uh, the loan period. And so I keep track in my accounting books, my bookkeeper does it for me, of all my different investors, how much they've been paid. And of course, it's a little complicated because it's a revenue-based loan. The amount that we're paying them each payment is going to be different every time because it depends on the revenue. And so a lot of people would say, oh, isn't that such a hassle? Don't you hate having to do that? And the answer is no, it's so worth it because then you really are in charge of something that's very critical in your business and that is making sure that your investors are well taken care of, that everything's being done correctly. Um, you can communicate with them, you can stay in touch with them. Sometimes they wanna make changes, you can make sure that any changes they make, like if maybe they wanna um, grant their investment to their child, uh, that has happened to us many times, or maybe the person who's managing their investments changes. So we have to track all of that. I don't wanna outsource that, to, especially not to a crowdfunding platform where that's not their core area of competence. They don't make any money doing that. They do that as a loss leader to try to attract more people to come on their platform and use their platform to raise money. So if you outsource that to a platform, to a crowdfunding platform, you're really taking a big risk because they might not do a good job. And I, I do want to mention that um, sometimes the platforms go out of business. So the reason I'm thinking about this right now is I was talking to someone, um, a woman who has a business in Baltimore who raised money on Mainvest and um, Mainvest has gone out of business they ran into some problems because they, uh, like many startups, they were a kind of, they had to keep raising money from investors to continue to be able to operate the way they were operating. They weren't able to do that. And they also um, were using a FinTech platform that ended up failing. Um, so it became this huge mess. They've gone out of business. I, was, I know many entrepreneurs have raised money on Mainvest. Um, many mom and pop type businesses because that's kind of who they serve. People who don't have a lot of resources to manage a big mess. And when Mainvest went out of business, it created a huge mess for these businesses. They have, because they, because Mainvest had promised them, oh, don't worry about it. We'll manage your investments. We'll deal with your investors. So now this woman who raised money on that platform is now having to deal with the fallout you know, figure out how to take over the management of it. It's a huge mess and it's not, it doesn't look good for her. Her investors are annoyed. Um, so even if you raise money on a platform that offers the service of managing your investors for you, I highly recommend that you go ahead and work with your bookkeeper to um, not, to do it yourself <laughs> and not rely on anyone else other than a professional who's skilled in doing this type of work, you know, investor management to do it. These portals, that's not, like I said, that's not their expertise and they have no, they, there's no guarantee that they know what the heck they're doing, how to do it correctly. And not only can it be a hassle for your investors, it can also result in, you know, violations of the law, incorrect filings or you know tax documents being done um so it's just it's such an important thing it, it, there's really almost nothing more important in your business than 
raising money in a way that ensures a win for everyone, for your business, for your stakeholders, for your investors, and that everyone is treated in a professional way, that your investors have a good experience. So don't outsource that to anybody unless that is their skill set. So, and another thing that you'll want to think about is how you structure your investment, because depending on how you structure your investment, it's going to um, either increase or decrease the level of difficulty of managing your uh, investors. So, for example, if you decide to offer your investors a loan where you're making a monthly payment, that's going to be a much bigger hassle than a quarterly payment. So think about that. Um, when you're preparing. And these are all things you really want to be thinking about from the very beginning as you're deciding which platform to use, uh, what to offer to investors, etc. So I hope that helps and I'll see you soon. Bye.